and welcome to Pirate News. I'm Megan Gonzalez. And I'm Liam Plate. On today's broadcast, we'll be covering the most important news from around campus and across the country. We will also bring you the Seton Hall Sports Update and your five-day weather forecast. Seton Hall's recent sports poll about legal sports betting was featured in USA Today, Action Network, Vegas Insider, Casino.org, and many more business-focused media outlets. The poll found that 55% that of the public supports the state-by-state -state process, 25% of the public thinks that it should be legal in every state, and for those who said it should be legal in all states, 37% of ages from 18 to 29 said yes, and only 14% of those 60 and over agreeing. Congratulations to the sports poll on their good work and getting recognized for it. This Thursday, join the Career Center as they present their wacky workshop from 11 to 4.50 p.m. in Bethany Hall. The workshop will be split into four sessions, each going over different topics to help boost your career. From 11 to 11.50 in the first floor conference room in Bailey Hall, stop by for internship and job search tips. For the second session, from 1 to 1.50 p.m. in Bailey Hall, room 209, learn how to use networking and social media in your job slash internship search. From 2.30 to 3.15 p.m. in Bailey Hall, room 209, another session will cover resume and cover letter writing. The last session from 4 to 4.50 in Bethany Hall, room 209, students will learn how to make a great first impression and how to ace an interview. For more information on this event, contact Nancy Borowski at nancy.borowski at shu.edu. The Joseph A. Unanu Latino Institute's annual La Gala will take place at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, October 24th at the New York Athletic Club. It is one of the Institute's most anticipated events of the year, and all the proceeds raised from the event will go to the Institute's initiatives towards scholarship aid, cultural programs, professional development, leadership opportunities, and an outreach program for first-generation college students. The event will be hosted by Rafael Pacheco from Telemundo and Adriana Vargas from Univision. It is an event you surely won't want to miss. Are you interested in learning more about Seton Hall? Stop by the first open house of the year and meet faculty and current students, get a tour of campus by student ambassadors, learn how to apply to Seton Hall, learn how to apply for financial aid and scholarships, and learn about the different organizations and clubs on campus. For more information and the sign up for this event, make sure to stop by stu.edu. And now we'll head over to Robert Ruskowski with your Seton Hall sports update. Robert? Thanks, Liam, and hello, Pirates. My name is Robert Ruskowski here with your Seton Hall sports update. First off, the men's soccer team was in action on Saturday in front of a lively crowd at ONT Kyron Field, but unfortunately the Pirates fell to Butler 4-0. The Bulldogs got on the scoreboard early in front of the parents' weekend crowd and never looked back as they scored two goals in each half to hand seen hold their largest loss of the season and their first at the newly renovated field. Overall, it was a sloppy effort from the men's team as they committed 14,000 and received a red card for the second consecutive game, forcing them to play the last 43 minutes with only 10 men. The Pirates will look to turn things around when they travel to Cincinnati tomorrow night to face off against the Xavier Musketeers. Moving over to the pool, the men's and women's swimming and diving teams were also in action over the weekend as they welcomed Montclair and Monmouth to the Arthur E. Impetor Auditorium on Friday. Both the men and women's team were able to dominate the meet in front of the home crowd as the men took both relay races and won nine individual events en route to a sweep of the dual meet, while the women won 11 individual events and swept the two relay races in their dominant performance as well. The Pirates will be back in action at home next Saturday when they welcome Drexel to the Arthur E. Impetor Auditorium once again. The meet is scheduled to begin at 1 p.m. Finally, the men's basketball season is quickly approaching and the Pirates have officially been ranked 12th in the Associated Press preseason top 25 rankings poll. This is the Pirates' fifth all-time preseason ranking and their highest placing since January 2001 when they were ranked 11th. Expectations are high for the team this year as Kevin Willard leads the team for his 10th season while the Pirates return 88% of their scoring from last year, including Miles Powell, who is already a potential All-American candidate. The Pirates will host Bloomfield College in an exhibition game this Friday inside the historic Walsh Gymnasium at 7 p.m. And the regular season tips off on Tuesday, November 5th against Wagner in Walsh Gymnasium as well at 6.30 p.m. Well, that is going to do it for your Scene Hall Sports Update. Once again, I'm Robert Ruskowski. Now back to Liam and Megan with your local news from the tri-state area. Thanks, Robert. Governor Phil Murphy is working to lessen the number of standardized tests for all sophomores in New Jersey. Murphy says he wants to eliminate the math and English exams known as PARCC as he wants to fulfill his signature education campaign promise to reduce standardized testing. The decision has yet to be signed off as the State Board of Education is still not convinced that less testing for students is better. The board states they, may, they hope to make a decision by early November. New Jersey's American Dream Mall in the Meadowlands by MetLife Stadium will be opening some of its attractions on Friday, but the thing, that, the thing that's gotten people talking is the price of parking. 
There are different rates for different amounts of times, which are reasonable. But the thing that people are complaining about with parking is that if there is a gamer concert going on at MetLife Stadium, patrons of the mall would need to pay $30 for parking. Plan accordingly, accordingly when you take your first visit to the mall. Now we'll head over to Ben Harris with your five-day weather forecast. Ben? Thanks, Megan, and hello to you, Pirate viewers. I'm Ben Harris, and I'm here with your five-day weather forecast to have you covered through the week here in the South Orange area. Today, we're looking at a high of chance of showers with a high of 63 and a low of 53. Tomorrow, the sun will come back, but we will see just a high of 62 and a low of 41. Then on Thursday, it'll be sunny again with a high of 65 and a low of 46 degrees. Friday, we'll see the clouds come back with a high of 64 and a low of 45. Then lastly on Saturday, the showers will return for a start of a rainy weekend with a high of 57 degrees and a low of just 42 degrees. That'll wrap up your five-day weather forecast. I'm Ben Harris, and now it's time to send it back to Megan and Liam with the latest news from around the country. Thanks, Ben. Just this last week, 10 students from NYU's Gallatin School of Individualized Study presented their different human rights projects. Each student received a $5,000 grant and were expected to intern at the human rights organization of their choosing. Some of the students' projects included donating their grants to sexual assault survivors from the Kosovo War and providing primary accounts of Syrian news to displaced people in Southeast Asia. Four new parents have pleaded guilty in the ongoing college admissions scandal. They are being brought up on charges of conspiracy fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering. These parents originally pleaded not guilty, but once they found out that additional charges could be brought up today, they decided to plead guilty to the original ones. These parents are only a small portion of three dozen parents who have yet to plead guilty or not guilty. And this concludes our broadcast of Pirate News. Once again, I'm Megan Gonzalez. And I'm Liam Plate. Thanks for watching and have a great day.